Rapator, R A P A T O R, like Raptor, but they threw an extra A in there. Rapator. I can't believe it. No. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, but it's a dinosaur. Yeah. It is a dinosaur. And according to Wikipedia, we're not sure if that spelling is just like a misspelling that's stuck from okay. Raptor. Rapator. All right. You've gotten three right, four wrong. You've plenty of time to turn this around. You need to get three more right. Oh out of our God. last, actually, you have to get all three right. <laughs> oh my God. If, uh, if, if people in the chat could lend me a hand, not a hand, more like a, a, like a life ring. Okay. What are those are things called that they toss off the side of a boat? Life saver? I need it. Life Inner saver. tube? <laughs> sure. Life okay. tube. Do you have, before we get into these last three, which again, you must get correct, or we're just going <laughs> to kick you out of this room and I will talk about your dinosaur fashion. Um, do you have any idea what the theme for the dinosaurs or the not dinosaurs is? Oh, no, I don't. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Next, maybe yeah. this next will help out. Yeah, I actually well, forgot that I was meant to be paying attention to how <laughs> to do that. Pariatolocephaly. Pariatolocephaly. The chat no. seems very no. nice. That's has correct. Yeah. Pariatolocephaly is not. Great. Right. The chat right. has figured out the theme, just so you know. Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I just didn't want to take their work and accept credit for it. So I just, you know, I want to give credit where credit's due. I listen. We appreciate yeah. that, but we also yeah. know here at Dino One One that science is a collaborative process, and you work together mm -hmm. with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next one is We Are a Saurus. We are okay. W E E W A R R A Saurus. We were a saurus. Yes, dino. That that is a dinosaur. You are now five and four. In is that is that a dinosaur that's from Australia? Because it just sounds like something that Australia would name a dinosaur. I am not liberty to discuss that until okay. we do this last one. Okay. To actually win the game and stay okay. in this Zoom room. Last but not least, Medulla oblongopteryx. No. Medulla oblongopteryx. No. No, no it is not a dinosaur. That is correct. It's not a dinosaur. Vanessa, you have won the game closely. Whew. Um, oh my God. Wait, wait, hold on. Christina, can you hit us with the air horn again? I can. There we go. Uh, wait, we may need to hit the air horn again if Vanessa can tell us either the theme for the dinos or the not dinos. Okay, so the not dinos are all brain parts. The, all the scientists here figured that out collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think the dinos are all Australian. That is absolutely correct. You've gotten the, Christina, hit the air horn again. <laughs> Amazing. So all of the dinosaurs from Fostoria to the Luva Cursor to Savannosaurus wow. to Rapaport to Weewarasaurus, these are all Australian dinosaurs. The Weewarasaurus gave it away because there's just a lot of place names that have indigenous words in them, like Weewarasaurus sounds very much like that. In fact, when I chose these, I had to choose, I couldn't choose all like very Australian sounding things. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, you did, you did very, very well. Um, Christina, kind thank you for you. being on the air horn so hard that entire time. No problem. Were you a little nervous that she wasn't gonna get six? Yes, I was because I don't, I don't know enough about dinosaur fashion to carry this show, but we would have had to ask you to leave. You know, what I just realized I forgot is to tell, uh, tell people the theme for our Mutabar source. So hopefully you guys haven't started too I much. Put it in the chat, so hopefully they got it. Put it in the, so it's not just Mutabar source because we're talking about dinosaur fashion. It is Mutabar source at a fashion shoot. This can either be on the beach. This can be on a catwalk. This can be going down a step and repeat. So Mutabarosaurus at a fashion shoot, beach, catwalk, step and repeat, whatever you guys want. Now, Vanessa, before we get into the, the matter at hand tonight, speaking of step and repeats, mm -hmm. which is your favorite? This is about to be a poll, not just for you, Vanessa. <laughs> speaking of step and repeats, which is your favorite thing to do that is called the thing that you are doing? Is it step and repeat, swing, slide, paddle, brush, or milk? Which is your favorite thing to do that is called the thing that you were doing? <laughs> I think Christine and I were on one when we wrote the polls this week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, in the swing camp, personally. I hope that doesn't 
swing the vote. Wow. That's hey. Cheers. That 101 Cheers. is always somewhat of a swing state. Not a lot of people want to milk anything. Nobody, we have four milkers here. So four shout milkers. out to them. No, it's only 70 or 80% voter turnout. We try to get up towards 90 here, Vanessa. I don't know, I don't know what, is the voter turnout way higher in Australia because like you automatically registered and there's like a national voting day, is that true? That's compulsory yeah. to vote, yeah. Wow, how different we are. Yeah, you get fined if you don't vote. Oh, wow. And Sarah says you get a voting sausage? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It is true. Um, they have a lot of sausage sizzles at uh, at the polling places. I feel like here you get fined if you try to vote. And no Basically. sausage to speak of. Yeah, right. Um, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing these results. It turns out people want to swing. People definitely want to swing, which I get. Makes sense. All right. So, all right, we are here. Time. It is time to talk about fashion, Vanessa. Before we get into this, I know that you've been traveling. You've been kind of like nomadic mm -hmm. digital mm -hmm. nomad lifestyle so mm -hmm. i know a lot of your dino gear is in storage in new york so yeah. you don't have a lot yeah. to choose from but you I look very know. nice what is what's the inspiration tonight so as you said sadly i found it out about this show after i departed my home country of new york city so all of my dinosaur clothes are in the storage so mm -hmm. i decided to dress being in los angeles right now as a hollywood paleontologist so you know when real paleontologists go out into the field, they wear a lot of like sun protective, comfortable, practical clothing, but not on TV and definitely not in movies. So I'm wearing a denim jumpsuit. I'm just gonna slowly stand up. Um, you can't really see the legs, but I have uh, in the theme of Hollywood unbuttoned the top button <laughs> and I've got just like a nice wide brim hat and that's where I'm at. Okay, I just put a question yeah. in the chat if you actually have yeah. legs, we'll see. Um, all right, so Vanessa, you you put together somewhat of a mini thesis on the past, present, and potentially the future of dinosaur fashion. Uh, yeah. You put that in four different waves. So I'm gonna let you mm -hmm. take it away. I have some images I'll bring up as you talk to us, but you first started with a first wave that you called niche enthusiasm. Take it away, what, what are we even talking about? Yeah, I, I just need a minute before I okay. take it away. Um, I'm curious what you thought of the wave approach, if you okay. thought it should be errors, like the different errors of time. Okay. Well, Back you gave you. me four waves, and they're technically the three like periods in the Mesozoic when dinosaurs are around, so I can see how it didn't really match up, and so I'm happy okay. with, okay. with waves. Yeah. And Jada and other animal in the water scientists here are happy that you're using a water euphemism. <laughs> love that so something that i want to i guess just highlight for everyone is when i was thinking about the waves and, and kind of building this thesis in my head it was about adult fashion yeah. so i want everyone to keep that in mind because i think that dinosaurs have been around in kids fashion for a very long time a lot of us have t-shirts with dinos on them from when we were kids um, a lot of people shared those on Twitter this week, um, but we didn't start seeing dinosaurs in adult fashion until I would say around 2010, um, maybe a couple of years before that, but kind of around 2010. So the first wave of dinosaur fashion is, is called niche enthusiasm. And this era kind of runs from 2010 to 2013. And really as the internet allowed us to connect with more niche interest groups, like everyone here who loves dinosaurs, um, a market really emerged for more interesting clothing and unique clothing. And a lot of that was driven by mod cloth, like the OG mod cloth when it was still a kind of small store there we go by Etsy as well I mean who remembers original Etsy before there was a lot of crap on there when everything was kind of handmade and and locally produced and stuff like that um there was also another store called Black Milk Clothing which was hey there we go um which is Australian um we can see that uh myself who's in the middle I have this really cool like Brontosaurus, a Patasaurus top that is set in a Renaissance painting. And they have some other like more um, lycra slash 
spandex type clothing people would probably remember black milk clothing for having the space tights like they were the first people who made space tights before everything went to hot topic uh, and there was another company called taddy divine which is from the uk who were the original producers of the t-rex necklace um which i had i, I still have it's just in storage as well um, but all of these items were super interesting, super fresh. A lot of us hadn't seen things like this before. We didn't have the opportunity to buy them. Um, and it was a really exciting time. I mean, Dustin, do you remember the first wave? Yeah, I mean, I think that, the, yes, absolutely. Uh, and I was going to ask you, like, is the success of this first wave, and by that, I mean, I guess these companies specifically, I think that mm -hmm. is what led into the second wave. Like, had these, like, specific yes. places not been successful selling this dinosaur stuff to like weird early dinosaur sartorial adopters like us then we wouldn't mm -hmm. even have the subsequent waves totally yes the first wave was everything the first the first wave you got to try yeah. to catch the first wave but if you don't just like the, just like any wave any wave in evolution you know the first right. wave was everything so moving on the second wave is mainstream fast fashion so as Dustin said the first wave was super successful like mod cloth was sold to Walmart, I believe. And then you have places like ASOS and Topshop and uh, even like Target and um, Amazon and all of these places adopting a lot of dino fashion, as you see. So these larger retailers really saw a market for this final geeky clothing. Um, and some of that was dino, some of that was space themed as well. And the, the supply exploded. So we have um, in this wave the production of all of the clothes which was really more local it becomes centered in China, other parts of Asia and Eastern Europe but making this clothing more cost friendly. So fashion that once had uh, a limited supply and probably more of a thoughtful design I would say is replaced with mass produced patterns and free two day delivery. But I mean who doesn't like free two-day delivery? Am okay. I right? You have. I found so much that you had me look up, and like so. Also, there was like a kind of a, I guess, an upping mm -hmm. of Etsy's game, mm -hmm. and, and Mod Cloth as well. So, like, what is the difference between these in the second wave versus like Mod Cloth and Etsy in that first wave? Yeah, it's interesting. So Etsy is a strange one. Like everything at the beginning used to be locally made and kind of handmade. And I think in the second wave, we see a lot of patterns that I think personally what the second wave did was it made dinosaurs more cartoon-like, more clip art-like. The actual form of the dinos dinos um descended into something that's more juvenile i think i'm not saying that's a bad thing at all but i just am interested in your perspective dustin from a species standpoint how do you feel about this so i don't mind i have a lot of prints where it's mm -hmm. like tiny print like this is all mm -hmm. stegosaurus by the way stegosaurus and t-rex did not live at the same time that's a whole mm -hmm. In fact, there's more time between T-Rex and Stegosaurus than there is between T-Rex and you. That mm -hmm. being said, I don't mind a print that has a bunch of different species. Um, I would prefer a single species per shirt, but what really grinds my gears is like, you'll see prints that have a bunch of different dinos, but also like a Smilodon and a woolly mammal. Mm -hmm. Like either stick to your dinos or stick mm -hmm. to your stink mammals, but that, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's a second main, or I guess a couple second second wave slides that uh, you had me look up. And I'm curious to know, actually, um, if I'm, you guys can just tell me in the chat. So I have two Jurassic Park t-shirts and one uh -huh. Jurassic Park tank top, and they are yeah. all from Target. Okay. Do people get these other places than Target? I wonder. Anyone in the chat? Not, not that I know of. Um, something that I do want to mention is the second wave is from 2014 to the present. And I do just want to flag that that was when Jurassic World came out. In the, I mean, the chat would know, but I want to say to guess maybe 2015 was when Jurassic World came out. So it was kind of at the same time as the Jurassic Park franchise was being rebooted. So you have a lot of big retailers doing all of this merch as well, which falls into the second wave. Important note. Speaking of big retailers. Love that swimsuit. Love that. 
Love so you that. can pretty much yeah. get anything on Amazon now. How do you, I should have asked yes. you, how do you feel about the prints, like on this mask and this, this shirt versus like kind of the one, like Christina's wearing, like the one dino. Did you have a preference? Yeah, I mean, personally, I, um, I prefer the one dino or the print that you have where it's two tones. Like I personally, like, don't like wearing many shirts that have like 10 different colors on them. That's just a personal thing for me. But look, I think that the second wave is an excellent point in, in dinosaur fashion because it allowed everyone to embrace the fashion, right? It, it shared it to a wide audience. It was at a better price point. It just allowed more people to get involved and to get amongst all of the dinosaurs and, and to get the message of dino love out there. That brings us, we're going pretty fast through the history of fashion. This one, I'm interested in these because this is where the yeah. price starts to really take off. So you call this, the third wave is oat lizards. Am I saying the, that right? The, the third oat? wave, say it again. Am I saying oat, oat lizard? Is that correct? Oat lizard? Yes, you are. Okay. And the third okay. wave, I find the most intriguing wave because that's okay. when dinosaurs went high fashion. So we yeah. have... Paul Smith, which is a UK brand. We have um, House of Cannon, which is from Australia, and Coach, which is an international uh, like high fashion chain. There we go. Um, all adopted dinosaurs. And this was from about 2017 onwards. So what happened is that we had the first wave popularize the movement. We had the second wave bring it to a mass market. And then in the third wave, we have the high fashion brands say, hey, you see what they're doing over at Target and Etsy for $30. Maybe we could do it for $300. And that is really the crux of the third wave. There we, there we have it. Um, upcrafted dinky with Rexy patch, $325. Rexy sweater, $595. I mean... Is that really worth it? Would you buy that, Dustin? Not for that price. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, like you know, Dino One Hundred and One, we it isn't like a high money value. Up, never mind. <laughs> uh, another question that I have for you, Dustin, is what is happening with Rexy there? Like, how do you feel about the form on the sweater? Like, forget that that sweater costs six hundred dollars. How do you feel about that dinosaur's form? Because it doesn't have much of a neck. I'm just putting out there that they, they've forgotten the neck. They have, right. The arms are really high up near the neck. Um, yeah. But because I think it's supposed to look kind of like that sweatery, thick yarn cable, like almost like pixelated type of thing. Like it can get away with looking a little weird versus like when it's a print and it still looks weird. And it's like, all right, you really messed up. But I feel like this is kind of part of the, the, the aesthetic if you will. It is fun. Like we haven't even said aesthetic yet. I'm going to say it twice. It's the problem with both of these, though, the one that you see on the whatever a dinky is, and then the sweater, is that they are um, slappers. Yeah, Christina, can you explain what you mean by that? Sure. Uh, a lot of times when you see a dino on something like a sweater or a lunchbox or whatever, a lot of times they're portrayed at T-Rex as slappers. So their wrists are shown this way so they can only ever do this with their arms. But the evidence in the fossils shows that their uh, hands would have been turned in. Like think about how much more useful this is. So T-Rex was not a slapper, but a clapper. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's very important, it's very important. All right, Vanessa, I believe that has taken us through our third wave. There's a little bit more to touch on in the, in the third wave. Mm -hmm. And I oh. just want to point out that Tatiana in the comments said that 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 Rexy looks like a zombie. And I think that you really need to look at the picture again to appreciate how much it does look like a zombie. It is, yeah, it's very zombie-like, that is fair. Yeah, that yeah, is. yeah, I really like that. And um, something else about the third wave was the materials. We haven't really mentioned materials at all. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the first wave, the materials were more like a cotton and fabrics that you would buy. And so with the second wave, in, introduced a lot more polyester, mm -hmm. lycra, spandex, a lot more uh, like cheaper materials. The third wave is really defined by wool, as we saw, and also silk. Um, there are a lot of screen printed dinosaurs on silk. Um, and I think a lot of those brands use that to justify the absurd price tag. I can see that. I can see that. 
So yeah, I do it, love a good fabric though. Who doesn't love a good course, fabric? Of course, who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like at an after party not so long ago, I was wearing a lavender velour jumpsuit because who doesn't love a good fabric? Um, That's an excellent uh, fabric. <laughs> so we have made it through three of your waves. We have another yes. fourth wave, which you have yes. referred to as indie renaissance. And then we have a special secret wave that I thought of that I just want to hear your thoughts on. But before well, we okay. do that, <laughs> I need to bring all of our contestants to the floor. We are about to play everyone's second favorite game after Dino or Not a Dino. It is time for what we are calling Opinion Dominion, which is basically also something called Take Survivor that I've blatantly stolen from my new favorite podcast, Take Line. Here's how this is going to work. There will be three different rounds. Each round will have a question. Each of you fair contestants will have 15 to 20 seconds to give us your take on that question. And then sweet fair audience your job will be to vote out who had the weakest take each round until we are left with one single champion of opinion dominion so vanessa we already know christina we know jada welcome to opinion dominion you're wearing your shark gear i would have expected that also a new contestant megan is here megan you're wearing all sorts of dinosaur gear are you excited for take survival I'm excited for life in general, man. That's, you know what, I'd like to hear that. All right, this first round, we are going to go Christina, then Vanessa, then Megan, then Jada. All right, here we go. Round one, take survivor, only the strongest take survive. Question number one, Christina, which is the most stylish dinosaur? Okay, so, one, you know I love a sauropod. And two, if you've met me in real life, you know I'm a tall person. And sometimes it's hard to dress a tall person. You have to get the things in the extra longs, et cetera. So I think it is just extra honorable mention that the Bruhath Chaosaurus is so stylish. Super tall, needs to reach the tallest branches, reaches the heights of fashion. And of course, look at this neck. The meatiest, meatiest neck of all, haute couture. Uh, I hope everyone drank to that horrible dad joke about reaching the heights there. Also, Christina, I want to act like I'm surprised you went with the thing with the most dank neck meat possible, but I'm not surprised at all. No one's surprised. Strong take out of Christina with Bruhath Chaosaurus as the most stylish dinosaur. Vanessa, who do you believe to be the most stylish dinosaur? The most stylish dinosaur is definitely the Stegosaurus, because the Stegosaurus knows how to accessorize. I mean, that thing has brought its own spiny back plates and has them all up all over it. Um, they have blood vessels in them. You know, it, it has the perfect accessory. Mm -hmm. We all love a good fashion accessory, right? Um, and those shingles, in my opinion, they really do it. <laughs> we should call them back shingles. I like back that you shingles. can put the color change. Christina's literally wearing a hyper color, a color changing shirt. Yeah. You know, with the dinosaur, yeah. who we think parts of it could have changed color, blushed red, fill those yeah. blood vessels, maybe to win. I mean, the other thing about the back plates is there's a little bit of controversy with the back plates. Am I right? And I all good fashion has to have just a little bit of controversy. Got to raise some eyebrows. Got to raise some back exactly. plates and eyebrows. All right. Exactly. Megan, which is the most stylish dinosaur? All right. Well, uh, Vanessa is saying that the that stylishness has to come with versatility and like usefulness. But I'm going for it. Like we got the Parasaurolophus. I brought a little visual aid here. I know that it is my favorite as well as one of Dustin's favorites sure. dinosaurs. But you know, we got the stylish head trombone, which not only looks great, but if you are trying to project and like really get some attention. It can get the job done. And like, if you can get the job done and look good doing it, what are you not accomplishing fashion-wise? Tell me. Okay. All right. Strong take out of Paris office. Also, uh, pandering to me will get you everywhere in this game. Next, <laughs> Jada, what is the most stylish dinosaur? All right, guys. I had to go modern because who doesn't love a modern look, you know? So we're going to go with the uh, greater 
bird of paradise drink, by the way, sorry for drink, that one. Drink with the bird. Um, these yeah. birds are gorgeous. And usually I'm queen of bird slander. You know this about me, but I have to say this bird is gorgeous. It's the birds of paradise in general have so many gorgeous colors, but I had to pick one. So I went with greater bird of paradise. It's got yellows. It's got oranges. It's got reds. It's got these crazy weird feathers on its butt that just kind of hang off and it's very fluffy. It's gorgeous if you've ever seen one of these animals. And you know what it uses it for? Mate attraction. It's like, hey babe, you see how stylish I am? Let's fuck. That's that's what this whole the entire thing is about. And what is the goal of fashion? It's to get people to want to fuck you. So that that is <laughs> that's why the, the greater bird of paradise. Okay. It's Strong take paradise. out of Jada about sexual selection and color palettes. Megan. Paris are all this with that crest. It's functional and fashionable. Vanessa Stegosaurus is they accessorize, they change color. And then Christina, who doesn't like some thick ass dank neck meat? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna open this poll. Remember, you are voting for who's gotta go. Who had the weakest take in round one? Who is our first contestant to leave Opinion Dominion? Please vote now. Oh boy, here we go, here we go. I just want to say apologies to my parents if they see this episode. Um, <laughs> they're not going to be too happy about what I said. Uh, it's pretty close oh, voting right now. Only a couple votes are separating our top competitors. This is so stressful. My mom always asks me if we'll be talking about Bacculi again when she's deciding whether or not to buy a ticket. That's a fair question. Yeah. it has got to go. This is close. There's 70, let's see, we have 81% of the vote. If we get up to 90%, there's only two votes separating our top contenders. If you have not voted, your vote could sway this election. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm nervous. I, I'm sweating. I'm going to give it, listen, we're one vote. One vote separates our top two competitors. I'm going to give it five, four, three, two, one. I'm ending the poll. Wow, that was so close. I'm sorry, Megan. <laughs> Megan, you have to leave Opinion Dominion before I boot you out of this little situation. Do you have any final words? I, well, you know what? You're going to miss my other hot takes. You, you did have and good that's other not hot my takes. loss. That's everyone else's loss. That's correct. You know what, Megan? Save them. Maybe we'll talk about them in the after party. Okay, I'll okay. save them. I will. Thanks, Megan. Uh, all right, we're getting rid of Megan. Bye, Megan. Sorry. All right, we're down to four competitors. Next round, we're going to go in reverse order this time, which I believe means Jada, Vanessa, and then Christina. Your second question, round two of Opinion Dominion. What style or piece of fashion do you really want to see make a comeback? What style or piece of fashion do you really want to see make a comeback? Jada. All right, guys, I had to go with the iconic sparkly jelly sandals, okay? <laughs> These things were so amazing. And I was too young for them. I never got to wear them. So I need them to make a comeback so that I can wear them. But let's just say they also have like an element of practicality to them because not only are they cute, but they are waterproof and you can wear them to the beach if you want to. You can wear them doing field work. Well, in my field, at least. And I think that that's something to be admired. So. Uh, cute, comfy, and practical. Can't can't get much better than that. Cute, comfy, and practical. You're right. All right, Christina, what style or piece of fashion do you really want to see make a comeback? Everyone, get out your fans, because I'm here to tell you about Regency waistcoats. <laughs> what <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay, think about Bridgerton. Just think about it and think about the little button of vests and the swooshy coats and the frilly collars for the boys. Think about it for a second. And then I'm sure you cannot help but thinking about a Regency waistcoat being on your floor. Okay, Regency waistcoat whose name just is the most pretentious name for a particular <laughs> piece of fashion ever. Regency waistcoat, strong, if not unusual, take out of Christina. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. This is what I was saying. Be careful when you Google hot Duke. Hot Duke. All right. Oh. Vanessa, just please tell us what style piece of fashion you really want to see make a comeback. There's a few things that I've gone for with my piece of fashion. One is comfort. 
I'm all about okay. comfort. Another is practicality. And mm-hmm. the third, I actually can't remember. So we'll see if it just comes out. Is, of it, aesthetic? is, is it aesthetic? The third is aesthetic. Okay. So mine is a 1970s jumpsuit. So I want you to imagine a very comfortable piece of fabric. You've got just one piece of fabric covering your entire body. It's flowing, it ties in the waist, it has sleeves, it kind of has this V-neck thing so you can just put it on. The yeah. reason why it's amazing is because it's comfortable, like no tight pants, we've all been working from home for ages and all we want is to put on something that we can just like loosely tie but that we can move around in, we could jump in it, we could do yoga in it, we could stretch in it when we need to take a break from sitting, all of those types of things. The other thing is the aesthetic. So a jumpsuit is just a single flowing piece of material that really draws the eye to all the right places, if you know what I mean. Um, And super comfortable, but also practical because it's just one piece of clothing. Like who wants to have to pick a shirt and a pair of pants and maybe a belt and something else all you need to do is just take that one thing out of your wardrobe and put it on you could have one in a different color for every single day of the week you only need seven items of clothing to get through your entire life so less decision fatigue your brain is really going to be in a better place and i have just quickly googled a visual aid that i'm going to attempt to hold up to the camera So we can see this is a lovely 1970s jumpsuit, flowy, just delicious. Okay. All right. So I feel like Vanessa and Jada both went with like things that look good, are comfortable and are practical. And then Christina went with like just time war, weird sexual medieval. It's not medieval, but I I don't know. It's it's silly England stuff, whatever. I don't want to sway the vote, but here we go. Again, this round, you were voting for who had the weakest take. Oh, nope, that's wrong. Oh. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> um, you are voting for who's got the weakest take. Who has to go? Is it Vanessa? Does she have to leave because of her 70s um, jumpsuits, flowy jumpsuits? Is it KG? Chris, I always call you KG to myself. Okay. Christina with the Regency waistcoat or Jada with the sparky jelly sandals. Who's got to go? Who had the weakest take in round two of Opinion Dominion? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Jay. Oh, no one likes jellies. Yeah, I figured that was going to happen because I saw the chat and people were like, no, fuck those sandals. They're blistery and it's fine. i would never got the chance to wear them. Everything. This was a very hard question for me to answer because you're like, what trends do you want to come back? I'm like, oh, you mean everything that I never got to experience? I don't know what trends I've missed. I'm small. <laughs> I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> I'm so- well, you know what? It's fine. And it's evident in the polling that you did not. Jada, I'm sorry. You were the next person eliminated from Opinion Dominion. Do you have any final words before we boot you? My final words are um, long live the jelly sandals. And similar to Megan, you guys are really going to miss my last take. I was, I'm was. i probably going to bring up your last take just because <laughs> I do appreciate what I think you were going to say. All right. Uh, bye for now, Jada. We'll see you per usual as you are the co-host, if not the host of the after party. But bye for now. All right, we are down to our guest Bert and my favorite co-host of all time, Christina and Vanessa. Here we go, round three. Oh, did I share these results? There, look, if I didn't, that's what happened, I swear. Okay. All right, here we go, round three. We talk on this program, it's a program now. We talk a lot on this program about sex legs. And usually Christina is here to tell us all about what a sex like is, but I don't want to spoil your take at all. So I'm just going to share a picture which will easily elucidate what a sex like is. There was one paleontologist at one point who had the hypothesis that the weight of sauropods was just so great that the only way a female would be able to take on a male's weight in order to procreate is to do it in water with the added buoyancy, hence the sauropod sex lake still TBD if they wore snorkels or not, but this is my rendition of a sauropod sex leg. Now, final round. I have a quick fashion accessory question. Did yeah. you put the snorkel on them or was that in the science photo library? Um, tell us in the chat right now if you think I found this as a stock image or I added those snorkels because I'm a grown ass mature human. 
Let us know in the chat what you think. It really looks 50-50 in the chat. I like that they're used above water. Yeah, they make no sense. Yeah, all. exactly. I mean, it's obviously a stock image, except I just can't, personally, I just can't believe that they would have the face mask and snorkel on in the stock image. No, no, I put it on. I absolutely put did. it on. Of course, of course I did. Come on. Come on. I put it on erroneously too because they are brachiosaurus with the nose is like up on the top. It didn't make sense. Whatever. Just let it go. Final question. No more stalling. Last round of Take Survivor. Here we go. Christina, we're going to go. We'll let the guest for go second. Okay. So Christina, you go first, then Vanessa. Here we go. Describe the outfit that you would wear to the sex lake in order to study the mating sauropods. This isn't a leisure trip. You are there as a scientist to study the mating sauropods. What is the outfit you were wearing, Christina? Okay, uh, as a field scientist, you need to be practical. It's a watery environment, but also as a visiting field scientist, I'm not from the sex lake. I want to have a when in Rome sort of moment. Uh, so what I choose is hip waders and nothing else. Specifically, uh, these hip waders. I'll show you. Durable adjustable belt, precision seams. You have advanced rubber boots so you don't get soggy socks. And my favorite thing about these hip waders, you can uh, wear them for all types of occasions, according to the place I went shopping. We didn't talk about visual aids, but I'll allow it. I think I'll allow it. Okay, so you're going hip waders with nothing else. Strong take. Vanessa, what are you wearing to study the mating sauropods of the sex lake? So I think if you're studying them, it's really important to get up close and personal, particularly in this kind of scenario that we find ourselves in, in the sex lake. Um, so I want to kind of get in the mood along with them and wear some Daisy Duke shorts, like some, some denim shorts. You know, they're durable. They have pockets. You can put your notepad uh, and your pencil because that's what scientists use to make observations uh, in your pockets and get right down there in the water uh, maybe some light shoes just to protect your feet um, but up top look I'm really into sun protection it's very important and um, you have to protect your skin against the sun and I would be wearing a long sleeve uh, SPF 50 shirt with a big hat, also SBF 50. I've really gotten into this personally, and this is just my my time to encourage everyone to buy more SBF 50 clothing because it's never too late. You really should. Um, so sexy down the bottom, practical up top. Okay, okay. I feel I like you guys are almost that. opposite in that yeah. way. <laughs> right? We have the Christina, sexy on top, practical on the bottom. Vanessa, practical yeah. on top, yeah. sexy in the bottom. Um, yeah. There's some jokes I can make that I'm not going to because it's time for us to vote. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this, this round, you're not voting for who leaves, you're voting for who wins, who had the stronger take, who is our champion on this week's Take Survivor Opinion Opinion. Please vote now. Who wins? Is it Vanessa or Christina? While you're voting, I will wow. share. I this am, is a runaway. This is a runaway. Wow, Christina. Christina, I think I pe think people like the tactical waiters that you you showed here. They have a durable adjustable belt. Yeah, what else? What else do you need there? That's what people want. Yeah, this isn't even close. The, we don't even need to wait for the mail-in ballots. I'm sorry. I'm going to share the results here. Uh, Vanessa, you've lost. It's okay. You won diner or not a diner, so you're one for one tonight, which is great. Christina, you won as a champion. You have any? Uh, you, you have a speech prepared? What's going through? <laughs> That, that's a speech that's basically a speech that's good also i do want to mention i jada had a very so i let me just say that jada's take i respect it because she's someone who is a shark scientist who actually goes out in water and studies organisms in the water and she was like i just go butt ass naked so i appreciate that jada all right vanessa we have a, a few Thanks. more minutes we have a couple more waves to get through so real quick hit us with the deets on the fourth wave, the indie renaissance. These are all different people on Instagram, different accounts. It's, it's true. The fourth wave is a quick one. Um, just to, to recap, the first wave was also kind of indie emerging artists. The second wave was mainstream. The third wave was really high fashion. So after we see that progression, we have this renaissance of indie artists and something that has allowed that to happen and the different platforms that have emerged. So Etsy is still 
I think one of the best places, honestly, to find dinosaur fashion, but it's a very crowded marketplace and there's just a lot of stuff on there. So what we're seeing in new platforms are ways that people can find more curated dino clothing and Instagram shopping, um, which they just annoyingly forced upon all of us with the little shopping tab down the bottom, is yep. one way that new dinosaur artists have been able to find audiences with their fashion. So it's kind of a revolt against the fast fashion in a way. And these new platforms have um, created new emerging markets for small businesses. Would, would well. you say it's like democratized it a little bit? Cause like anyone can have their shop and make their dino gear? Is that fair? I would say so. I think not completely because if you are a big name that you might still come up in search results before smaller people but I think like the internet has democratized fashion in a big way um a lot of shops don't have storefronts anymore like people may have heard of um there were a, a lot of brands that started just as like direct to consumer they call them before they even have a storefront and there's a ton of really successful brands that way so yeah I think the internet has been fantastic for fashion Okay. Now there's one, I think, I don't know if I want to call it a wave as much as like a big influence that you did not bring up that I know okay. is huge for me, is huge for Christina. It's probably huge for a number of us here in the room. So Christina, I just wanted to share this picture because I don't know what we're going to call this wave. So I called it the uh, wave, but what it is, is museums because there are plenty of fashion items, dinosaur related in museum gift shops. And I would say this even predates your first wave. So Christina, yeah. I just wanted to share this picture because you look cute as shit and very happy. Is the shirt you're wearing tonight that you also see in this picture, is this from a museum gift shop or no? Or are you just in a museum model? Um, it's not from the museum this picture is taken in, but it's from a dinosaur, it's in um, Colorado. Dino Ridge. Dino Ridge. It says it right on here. I had to look up on my own shirt. Well, yeah, so it's, still, it's a scientific like dino institution. Dino institution. And you're wearing it in a different museum. Some people aren't very happy about it. That's fine. Not everyone is going to understand fashion. But I wanted to bring this up because like, this is my favorite shirt. This is one of my favorite pictures of me. This is a shirt I bought in the American Museum of Natural History gift shop. It is a bunch of dino pattern on there. And then this picture is in the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto. This picture on the left also bought this at the am &H gift shop. This picture is at am &H. In the middle, I'm wearing a suit tank from the Field Museum. And then the far right, those socks are from the Natural History Museum in London. So you can get tons of very cool diamond shapes that. in uh, di uh, museum gift shops all over the world. And in fact, certain items are so popular, they are bought in different museums. So for instance, this, <laughs> some of you may know Tom. He's a guest for returning champion here, uh, Science with Tom. He and I are wearing the same shirt that we bought at very different museums on different coasts and then randomly showed up at the same party wearing, this speaks to the power of museum fashion. So I'm curious, Vanessa, yeah. where does this fall in with your ways? Because I feel like sure. gift shops have been a treasure trove for dino fashion for years. They definitely have, they're fantastic. And personally, I wouldn't describe that as a wave. It's not a wave because yeah. it didn't come and go. It, it's been there through time. So I would call it institutional stability. Ooh. Other things happen in the consumer markets. You know, we have dinosaur clothes come to Topshop and to Target and they come and they go, but the museum gift shop, it's always there for us. So it's the institutional stability that exists alongside the different waves that we have in the consumer marketplace. And it's a great way once we start going back to museums more and more to support museums, like if Definitely. you have the means, pay your admission, go buy some in a gift shop. Museums are gonna need as much help as we can get as we start like yeah. opening the economy back up quickly. And for a lot of right. you don't even have yeah. to physically go into the museum right now. You can order on their website mm -hmm. and then bring the museum to your house. That's how I got that Sioux shirt, which Grace, if you're here, Grace, thank you for sending me that Sioux tank. Sioux tank. All right, um, before we go to our Mutaburosaurus at a photo shoot and your fashion gallery, Christina, can we take a couple questions for our esteemed behavioral scientist expert, Vanessa Hill? Please, and if there were any that you were sitting on, send them to me in the chat. We'll get to question and answer time right now. <laughs> It's, it's happening. Type quickly. Now. Uh, so let's, let's talk about Miss Frizzle. 
she mm -hmm. a fashion icon this type mm -hmm. of dress with the print of the um, topic of the day is iconic so uh, we had a question a while back asking you to just comment on Miss Frizzle's fashion and how that might have influenced dino fashion. Sure. Um, I didn't get the magic school bus in the country that I grew up in, so I don't really know anything about Mrs. Frizzle. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm an Christina, immigrant. turn that question around on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> of course, as a science teacher uh, who like is animated, as a person, I get compared to this uh, literally animated science teacher. And <laughs> she, uh, that's where the comparison ends because she was incredibly stylish. Every lesson, she had a dress with a print that went with what they were doing that day. So if they were taking wow. it. Off. I love that. I love that kind of enthusiasm because I think that clothes can be a vehicle for learning. And that's what I love about dinosaur fashion is that people comment on it because it's unique, maybe it's eccentric, but more so it's just fun. It's such a fun way to express yourself and your interest. And when people comment on it or ask you about it, what do you do? You start talking to them about sex legs because really that's what they were asking about. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And I, I'm an educator and I know many people in here are educators. I think it did open the door for us to just be a little quirkier. Right, we need to look professional and to make it clear that we are the adult in the room, but the adult in the room can wear a cartoonish science-y dress too, which is. Yeah, yeah and, and I have different opinions about what types of clothes make you look competent, right? Because there is a business suit or a type of aesthetic that people think you need to wear in business meetings and things like that. But when I have, have been in meeting rooms with people who are in, fashion who are actually in Hollywood they're wearing sweatpants <laughs> and and it, you know most people in New York City just wear like joggers or running shoes everywhere even at work so I think that we should all like have a more flexible perception of what clothing makes people look competent and we should just wear things to express ourselves more often 100% what is your personal favorite uh, piece of dino fashion that you own? My personal favorite is um, I actually have a dress that I have never worn, <laughs> um, but it is a cocktail dress. It's a black strapless cocktail dress and it's silk and it has a huge print of a T-Rex skull on it. And I've never worn it because I've never been invited to something that was fancy enough where it was appropriate to wear this. But if I follow my own advice, I should just like wear it out to get coffee. Is it's it, actually it's not... the same print as that. It's the same as that, except it's on a black dress. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is that a T-Rex? Um, uh, yeah, it's hard to tell. It's got weird angles. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Reason 5,000, we need museum parties to come back. Exactly. One more question, if okay. we got it. Uh, Love it. <laughs> that was my follow-up. What is your ideal dino occasion to wear dino fashion to? Or just oh. ideal occasion to wear some dino fashion to? The premiere of the next Jurassic whatever movie. Yes, that's, yeah. 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 yeah, I think for me, it's a tie between that and like the paleo party at the American Museum of Natural History, but who knows mm -hmm. what we're gonna have museum parties again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I think that was the last time we were all in the same place. One day. Um, um, one day. One day. All right, uh, let's do this. Let's do this gallery of Mutabarasaurus on at the photo shoot, as well as what you were wearing. So if you have a drawing to show, Please hold it up. What we're going to do is going to have you hold up your drawing. We're going to make a quick comment on your Mutabarasaurus. And then please move drawing to side so we may see the raratorial choices you have made this evening. That's a dad joke, right? Raratorial versus sartorial? Yes. Sure? Okay. Yes. It's like we're at 10 and I haven't quite finished this. I don't think we've been drinking enough. There hasn't been enough men. Vanessa, I don't know that you said the word aesthetic and you said that you were going to say the word aesthetic. I think aesthetic a number of times. All right, we'll just drink. Jada just yeah. pounded what looked like 
antifreeze. I don't know what she's drinking over there, but that's fine. All right, um, please hold up your drawings. I'm gonna remove us, our spotlight so I can spotlight you beautiful people. We will start actually with Jada. Hi, hi, hi Vanessa, or Christina. Um, Jada, we have a Metaverse source. Ooh, I ooh, wearing another dinosaur. It looks like a bird or something. So that's another drink. Well done. I like oh, it. Oh, wow, that dress is fantastic. You love right, sharks. Right. What are you going to do? So many sharks. Um, our other Opinion Dominion contestant, Megan, you're wearing, <laughs> I was going to say every piece of dino gear you own, but that's not true. I know you have even more than what you're wearing right now. What, okay. Oh. My God, the reveal, wow. the reveal that just won't quit. It's great. Love that. Even the mug, even the mug is good. Wait, oh. are you, what do you do? Stop taking, okay. This isn't the after party. Let's, let's take it easy. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Uh, Lisa, can we see your shirt real quick? Oh, I like this. I've never seen that one. Well, it's like a dress into it. It might into even it. be a clapper. It's like oh. almost there. Thank you, Lisa. That's great. All right. Oh, wow. Look at this. I Actually, love what? this. Oh. Love the catwalk. And there's press. Look at the press taking photos. Love, love it. it. Are love you wearing it. anything? Are we wearing a dino? That's okay. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to go to Vanessa now. Vanessa has a great. What, what? Wow. I love the makeup. Yep, I it's like the Magnum. Purple. He unveiled Magnum. Oh, that's, I was like, what? No, I, okay, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Let's do Magnum. Can we see your shirt? It's a good shirt, dress, Ooh, print. Oh, so, okay, so here we go. I love Vanessa, that color. what you were talking about with the one species print. I love it, yeah, and the same color. It's great. Yep, yep. love it. Uh, Michael Baharo, here we go. <gasps> Happy wow, birthday. we have a graduate of FIT. <laughs> I love that. That is a fashion. Dino B Day party. Christina, this is for your birthday this week. Thank you, Michael. Wow. Look how much Mountain Dew he bought you for your birthday. Oh, I think that's for you. You're the Dew fan. Yo, it's Dew to Dew. Um, all right. Wait a minute. Before we get to the next piece of art, I just need to know what's going on with this shirt right here. Oh, it's an emu, which is a bird, which is a dinosaur. Oh my god. Um, I'm. Do we need to have a lesson in how to pronounce emu? Please, please go ahead, you Australian. It's e. Like e dash mu, e mu, mu, e mu, e mu, mu. mu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's Ooh, I like that. That is, I really like the art. Oh, yeah, that's a cool print. It's a oh, it's a, yeah. It's the, oh, it's a skull. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee, you your reaction to that was amazing, but you also have a great necklace. I've never seen that. And a, and a pin. Oh, it's alive, fossilized, alive. Oh, and dinos in the that dress is yes. fire. That's a good that one. That's great. Wow, wow. All right, we're going to Carly now. I've not been to the Burke. I've heard. Oh, it. cool, the Burke. There's a there's at least one. How many dinosaurs are on your shirt? One, two, one, two, two. two. And one, one of them is a bird, bird, which means it's very fast. Kind of. Yeah, it's very cool. It's a good, it's a good shirt. All right, let's see who's next. Um, I feel like there's a man in this picture who has lots of dinosaurs on his shirt. And okay, <laughs> <laughs> yoga dino. Oh, and a backpack. On the go dino. Love very that. Very cool. I love this polo. Oh my yeah. God, what a great shirt. It's a good polo. Is that a and, snake? Uh, okay. It's a lizard. That, it's a bearded, is it, what is it, a leopard gecko? Are we looking at a leopard cool. gecko? Leopard gecko. Not a dinosaur, but we'll allow it. Um, look at this mask. Oh, I should, have, I should have worn mine. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Think, think oh. Pan, oh. All right, knew that was coming, all right. <laughs> All right. I have lots of dino gear. I do not own dinosaur underwear. Do I? Oh do God, do I? Well, we, all, we all know what to get you for your birthday. Hey, Vanessa, you know when we do this, I'm like, hey, draw it like digitally or ink and paper or pencil or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I bet you didn't expect to see this. Oh, what? Is that a cake? <laughs> oh my God. I've done it again, Hannah. Wow. Hannah's done it again. It's Everybody a very cool, like, like common San Diego oh. aesthetic. Fashion too. Yeah. That shirt is great. Yeah, that's cool. Um, our Hannah always crushing it. 
I feel like I see a couple. Yep, we have two people with Dino. Oh, I've never seen. Yeah, let's do this picture first. Miss Dino 101. Oh my God. <laughs> that's so cool. Um, is that dinosaur wearing Speedos? Because that's fantastic. Dino, Dino. Hey, put in the chat where you got that t shirt because I've never seen that and I like it. Because I'm going to come to your house and take it. I'm going to come to your house and <laughs> steal your clothing off of you. Um, Katie, we're coming to you. Oh, that's beautiful. The shading is great. Oh, fashion. We have a garment. Oh, that's a good textile. Wow. I, I love oh. all of the different colors and textures oh, in yeah. the dino. That's yeah. really cool. 100%. Oh yeah, they almost look like watercolors. I don't know if that's just the webcam, but it's cool. Hannah Hannah bakes her Dino of the Day. She may have some competition though, because we have a Dino of the Day in Needlepoint. <gasps> wow! I am. Oh a my god! Girl. It's a hat model. Where is, is that a birthday hat? <sighs> that also wow. looks like it's got hair curlers, kind of. This kind of looks like hair curlers. I'm into it. That is so cool. I can't so believe. Good. It, so good. Has done that just in this time. I haven't done anything other than just talk a lot. Let's go find dinosaurs. Let's go. Oh, home. I yeah. dressed as Hello Kitty. That was who I was going for. Nice. Dino Fashion Week. Oh, on the catwalk, Jojo. Oh, I like this dress too. Yeah, that's a cool dress. Has a cool neckline. I oh, with the earrings. Do they, are they? I I don't know what species that is. <laughs> It's hard to tell from that. Yo, those are great. Listen, if you guys come to After Party, which we'll talk about in a minute, we're going to go deeper into all your amazing pieces of fashion. Hot Mutaburosaurus. I love the fake, they can only be fake eyelashes, and I think it's additive, like fantastic makeup. Oh my God, look at the bag. Whoa. Wow. What, what can you carry in that? It doesn't matter. Is that, that my coach? I have doesn't to matter. ask. <laughs> doesn't matter what you can carry in that. Uh, Marta, I can't tell. Do you have a dino dress on or no? Can you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down? It's not. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm contractually obligated to not spotlight you because you're not wearing a dino. <laughs> um, next. Ooh, look at this. This is like. That has like, a real Moira Rose vibe. Oh, yeah. I was going like Picasso cubism situation, but okay. Okay. The outfit, I mean. The outfit's oh. really a Moira outfit. Ooh. Oh, oh and the pants. And the Halloween dinos. Work it. Work cool. it in Halloween. Every dinos. time, Ryan. Yo, Keisha, always happy to see your face. Look at yes, this. Yeah. I want oh, it. I love that. I want it. I love the minimalist color scheme on that. They just the oh wow. Oh, the pocket, the accented pocket. Great. So it's a dinosaur. Great. Look at that. Perfect. It's rocket. So good. So love good. It. Um, let's see. What? I just need to highlight uh, my friend John here because what is even happening? John, are you okay? Where are you? Are you blink twice if you're being held you're hostage? Danger. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I don't know what's going on with John right now. That's okay. Um, I think that's everyone. If I've not seen your Dino Fashion or your oh, he's asking us to wait. What are you showing us, John? What is happening right now? Are you in a tent? He's in some kind of tube. John, we're waiting for you. I'm also looking to see if there's anyone who we have not highlighted who needs to show off their gear. It seems like that's everyone. John, we can't wait forever. I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> Tias, Tias is eating a cloaca. Maybe. He I'm might sorry, be John. Send it Maybe in the we'll hear from on. John in the after party. Um, yo, that was great. So uh, we have a couple of final orders of business before we get to the after party. Hey, Christina, is the after party at all whatsoever connected or sanctioned by Atlas Obscura? No. 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 no You're not. literally in your house. You can come yeah. hang out, yeah. have some drinks, have some chats. You don't have to, but it's fun if you do. Yes. This is where every no week people in the chat. I love it. Every week people in the chat right now are like, it is mandatory. You have to be there. It is required. Vanessa, before we all obviously go to the very required after party, do you have any mm -hmm. final party words? First of all, thank you for being here. I love that you broke that so name. I think I understand the evolution of dinosaur fashion a little better. I mean, I would not have this haute couture tie from J. Crew if it weren't for those mm -hmm. first couple waves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Do you have any final party words? Thank you for having me. I just want to say, everybody, live your life, 
be your best self, wear what you want to wear, express yourself, just have fun in life and in what you wear and have a wonderful weekend. That's all. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you for being here. Christina, do you have any final words before we go to the mandatory after party? It's not. Uh, Vanessa, thank you for being here. So good to see you and have you here uh, talking about dino fashion. Something that people have been like, look at my dino fashion. Now we can actually break it down, put it in historical oh, yeah. context. That's amazing. Um, yeah, have a great vaxxed girl summer in which you wear or take off whatever the heck you want. Yeah, just roll up to the sex like totally nude. Jade has got you. Let's go. All wow. right. Uh, <laughs> you guys, next week, I should mention next week, we are going to do a worldwide tour. Now that we're all getting vaxxed and it's hot vax girl summer, we're doing a worldwide tour of the most incredible fossils ever found from all over the world with Dr. Dean Lomax, who has literally written a book called 50 Incredible Fossils from Around the World. So we're going to highlight some of the most incredible fossils that have been found from literally every single continent on this planet. Get vaxxed, get your passport ready. We're going on a worldwide trip. But for now, well, first I should mention the after party again, it is not mandatory, but if you want to come, it is the same link it has been in the prior weeks. If you do not have the link, dive headfirst into my DMs on either Twitter or Instagram. I will send you the after party link. We're probably going to play another round of Tick Survivor. And we're going to look at your fashion because it's going to be great. But for now, I don't care if you're asking questions, searching for dinosaurs, or maybe you're reaching for your phone down in your incredible dinosaur dress because it actually has pockets. Isn't that a thing that, that women love? Dresses with, with pockets, you're digging. Like it. you're digging Definitely, and, and, jump, and jumpsuits with pockets. It's it's nice. Jumpsuits with pockets. Either way, never stop digging. I love all of you guys, but not as much as dinosaurs. We'll see you in the after party. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Vanessa. Dinosaur fashion forever. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.